I'm back. We are back. Um, thanks for staying with me. And um, yeah, now I would like to use the last part of the tutorial uh, to play a little bit with this. Um, maybe you have an idea, maybe I have an idea. Um, um, and I would like to encourage you to ask questions. So I'm, I look at the chats, whether I see something. Okay, so, um, okay, I was asked to go through the proof of mass conservation once more, yeah? Which... Now, so the, the mass is the integral over the complete domain integral over the uh, this this curve and we can uh, for um, uh, we appro approximate this integral as the sum of all use when we are in our discretization a uh, discretization we into um, uh, we approximate that by the sum of all use times delta dx you know, because that would be a, a, a numerical approximation of the Riemann integral and I suggest I would just do uh, do repeat the uh, derivation again here on on the whiteboard. So keep in mind the equation that we want to solve is or that we have solved is u t plus one half. So whether we put it into the, so we, we can move the one half in front of this, yeah, equals zero. This is our Burgess equation. The mass was defined as integral from over our, our domain zero to, L U T X DX. Note we integrate over the X's, we don't integrate over T. So this will be a, a, in, in principle can be a function of, of T. Yeah. So uh, if we don't know that mass is conserved, it, it can be a function of T. And what we do now is we uh, take the time derivative of that, yeah, and we show that this is zero. If this is zero, this means uh, um, if, it, if the derivative of something is zero, that means it's independent of the variable. Huh? So um, if the derivative with respect to time is zero, it means it's independent of the time. So it's a constant, yeah? Um, so let me write it again, zero L U T X dx. And what do we know about u? We know it uh, fulfills this equation. And the other thing that we know is the, the boundary condition. I take a, a, per, um, a pe periodic boundary condition. Uh, the background is I have to make sure that no mass can leave the system. So uh, if, uh, let's say, we have a shock front and uh, we have boundary condition zero here. That, that, then this would mean that the shock front would just vanish. So matter that runs over uh, uh, will be in a way uh, destroyed here. Yeah? What, uh, what we ensure by period of boundary conditions is that everything that uh, moves uh, um, over the right boundary will reappear at the, uh, at the left boundary. Yeah? So it will re-enter here. That is the peri periodic boundary condition. So we assume that u uh, at every time u at the left boundary equals to u at the right boundary. So what will happen? Um, we can move the d 
uh, over dt in, in this integral. What is the, the uh, what is the time dependence of this? Um, yeah, this th there's no time dependence of, of on this variable, but uh, on this variable. So this is the same as integral over uh, time uh, over space of the time derivative with uh, of of u. Let me see if there are further questions. Yeah. Okay. And now, um, yeah. Now we can use uh, this equation here. U t. We can move this to the right hand side. Equals minus one half times the uh, spatial derivative with respect to u. Uh, so this is minus one half. I, I plug this in front of the the integral. Um, or draw this outside of the integ integral, zero to L, d over dx, u squared. Let's write on the variables here as well, dx. Yeah, but, but now you know, so this is the, uh, the uh, t, we look at it at a, at a fixed t, so we have uh, this this here, and what what do we, do we know about the integral from zero to f of a function df over dx dx? This is a thing that, that that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Yeah, this is just f from zero to l. Yeah? so this is f of l minus f of zero. Side note, so we can use that and get um, no. Yeah, don't worry that this is not uh, we, uh, d over dx. We don't write this because this is a function that depends on two variables. Yeah, but but otherwise t is a fixed value. Um, so um, we nevertheless we can apply the uh, fundamental theorem of of um, calculus. Now, so this is. Um, Minus one half times u t x squared from zero to l equals to minus one half u t l squared minus u t zero squared. But since these are the same, also these values are the same, and this is zero. Yeah. And therefore, we know m of t is constant in time. It's a very, very important result, this um, conservation. Yeah. I hope this answers the question. Otherwise, when there is a specific part, uh, then please let me know with a follow-up question. Okay, thank you. Yeah, fine. Um, yeah, maybe we can. Um, I, I suggested that we play a, a, a little bit with uh, the results and the method. Let me see. I don't know why, why did I do that? I don't remember why I introduced this 0 0.03. Oh, sorry. Um, it, it should work this way as well. 
Okay, um, so why not play a little bit with the, the method? Um, first thing I do, uh, ha have a look at this initial condition. Yeah, so um, I will do a, a very simple thing. Um, rather than propagating this uh, initial condition, I will propagate now the initial condition. I, I multiply this function by 10. Let's see what happens. Something happened. Our algorithms were not happy. <laughs> Maybe I exaggerated a bit. Um, I multiply it with two. Still not so happy. I multiply it with 1.1 1. 1.3 so with 1.3 there there seems to be a problem somewhere yeah uh, and in both both schemes any idea what what, what this might mean 1.2 Oh, if, if I'm making the functions bigger, then something something happens. If if it's they're getting too big, then there will be a problem. Yeah, so you see a uh, runtime warning, overflowing, uh, encountering. Yeah, that that means that the values are uh, running to infinity. Um, what can happen here? And now let, let's uh, go into the other direction. I make it smaller, zero point seven. And then there seems to be no problem. Any idea what can happen here? What has happened here? Ah. Uh. Ah, okay, it worked for you. That's interesting. Ah, um, probably it worked for you because, um, uh, please confirm, um, I have just corrected this here. Yeah, b before uh, I had, let, let me see. Okay, okay, yeah, I, I guess it's uh, 10 times. I guess it's uh, th this one. C could it be that uh, you still have uh, this uh, dt times uh, zero, that you still have this factor in, in your slides? Okay, okay. And I, I guess you will also run into problems when you um, remove the 0 0.03. Could you run it again and see, uh, say us whether the problem will show up? I'm sorry. Okay, also, also with, uh, uh, okay, but, but then uh, the initial condition is set uh, to one again. Yeah, If you increase it to three, then I guess you will run into the problem again. Yeah. Okay, but uh, yeah, thank you very much. So it was a very good idea to share the screen, yeah. Okay, any any idea? So the the reason is um, that yeah remember um, the mass uh, sorry this a uh, also played a role the sigma in in our uh, transport problem was a times dt over dx uh, and our uh, a is the the velocity when I said um, 
and and now we don't have a but we have u in front yes so, so that means that um uh there are regions where where uh, u is um 10 actually yeah so as as high as 10 that means this uh um for all practical purposes we have a um a sigma which is a time ti 10 times dt over dx yeah so uh that's why we cannot make uh dt too large yeah? same would happen if we uh if we say sigma equals um uh, let's say even two point two times uh, dt over dt uh, dx yeah? and we get uh trouble again we so um We, um, or uh, let's let's put it here. Yeah. To make the time step too too large, we get into trouble and again into instabilities. It looks a little bit different. Uh, we don't see this these oscillations here because uh, yeah, things are slightly more different. But uh, um, what would no be no problem again? We can uh, say uh, it's two times uh, dx, and uh, for compensation, I say. Uh, 0 0.5 times then then we should be fine yeah and we are fine so in, in nonlinear problems be careful um it might uh yeah nonlinear non means uh that, that if you have double the if you double the initial condition there's no guarantee that you will uh, that, that your output will just be doubled or something like that yeah but the solution can can look completely different that's uh, characterized by characterizes nonlinear uh, problems they may depend uh, very crucially on the initial conditions So uh, again, any questions concerning this? Okay, th so then my next question. Um, I said uh, there there are initial conditions that would not lead to the formation of a shock front. I wonder whether some of you find out uh, what this could look like. By the way, I can can also do uh, the following thing. Now let's take another initial condition. Uh, let's let's take a ste steeper peak, yeah, and and you see we we observe basically the same phenomenon. Yeah, so, so here I have this kind of peak, and then it's it's uh, also forming a shock front, and the the left side will become um, uh, flatter. Let's go with it for some time more, and you see again uh, our conservative scheme works. Our non uh, conservative scheme stops yeah? and we don't have mass conservation and uh, how about uh, this one here um, um, I modify the initial condition and you see that we also get uh, mass conservation in this case
Okay. So my, my question was, um, can you imagine an initial condition where uh, that uh, would, would not lead to the formation of a shock front? Now, where we wouldn't have this result that there are regions of, high, uh, that there are um, high U regions that move fast and overtake this, the other regions. What do you think? Is it possible to, to for, uh, get solutions like that of the Burgess equation? Yeah, actually, actually, it's possible. Yeah, let me let us construct one. Um, so, yeah, well, um, what would, would we have to make sure? We, we have to make sure that uh, uh, we have motion. Let, let's assume that you must be non-negative. It, it must be positive or zero. Yeah. Where we have a zero, there are uh, transport. There will be no transport. Um, so we must avoid that that the function um, at the right hand uh, side of a point is getting smaller than the function on on the left hand side. Yeah. So. Um, uh, um, so basically, this means that, that the function must be non-decreasing. Yeah, what, what can happen for uh, what we could could have, for instance, um, is um, and maybe we can look at uh, at mass conservation again. Um, To the following. So here we have again a situation where we have a, a de decreasing function and, and where we have formation of a shock front. Now let's modify that. Uh, uh, so th this is done using here a piecewise function. Maybe it's a ni nice opportunity to, to see the, this. Um, what we do is we define the, uh, the initial condition the following way. Zero. Um, it's a piecewise function. Of the variable X no? and X will be uh, the linear uh, here. Our, our discretization discretized grid. Piecewise. X. And. And uh, let's do the following. Uh, we make it continuously increasing from zero to one uh, to, yeah, let's say one. Uh, for all values that are less than, um, let's say five. So we, um, oops, sorry. We have to specify it in, in, in an array. So if X is less than five, and we have another condition, if S, X is larger than or equal five. So these are the two cases. In the case that um, X is less than five, we say it should be just, um, Let's say it should increase from uh, um, zero to one. Yeah? So it should be um, X over five yeah? because at X, this increases if X is zero, um, this will be zero. If X is five, this will be one. And after that, 
as soon as we have to, have arrived at the, at the value one, we will um, keep it there. Yeah, so this this should be our in the initial condition. Before I compute the solution, let's just look at the initial condition, whether it's uh, it's uh, not properly uh, integrated. Ah, sorry, forgot this. It's I have to define it as a lambda function. Lambda x to x over five. Yeah, so, so this is uh, the the initial condition. And now we see um, oh, what, what will happen. We, we will uh, think about the uh, note that I do, didn't implement the uh, the boundary conditions here. We can do this a, a little bit later. Um, so so um, I can no longer expect. So what is uh, moving uh, over the right boundary will, will now be lost. I can tell you. Um, uh, so what is our expectation? So um, here, here it's qu quite clear. Here we have a u equals to one. This will just be a, a constant transport with ve velocity one. And these areas are actually smaller. Yeah. So um, uh, the, the velocity is smaller here. Yeah. Here we have only velocity one half, which means that this part here runs away from this part. Yeah. And uh, let's see what what happens then. Uh, now let's um, move to t equals one. And you see. Yeah, um, U is our initial condition. Maybe uh, I make it a little bit finer. Let's do it on 500 data points, such that, that there's a more distinct. Yeah, um, yeah you, you, you see that um, these parts are moving slowly. And, uh, and and these parts are, are moving rapidly. Yeah? So what, what we here have is an expansion of this front. So the, the, these are moving away with uh, velocity one, and these are uh, moving with velocity two. And we see there's not a big difference between the um, between the two, two schemes. Uh, let's take t equals 10. And we see it still be behaves very, very nicely. Yeah. Um, in this case, where we have no um, no formation of a shock front, no problem, uh, there are our differences uh, be between the conservative scheme and the non-conservative scheme are uh, considerably uh, less. Huh? So we see that both schemes yield basically the same results. Yeah, um, if we look at the uh, total mass, things look a little bit um, disappointing. Any idea wh why this is, is the case? So actually, uh, we are using ma uh, losing mass here. We must be using ma losing mass. Huh? Why do it's it's quite clear that uh, the blue integral must be larger than the than the integral under the um, green and orange curves that are uh, almost coinciding. Yeah. And the reason is that we haven't implemented uh, periodic boundary conditions. Uh, what, uh, what moves over the right boundary doesn't re-enter over the, le the left boundary. That would be a, a completely different solution um, um, yeah, because maybe we should just look for fun. Um, uh, peri uh, period boundary conditions. Uh, so we have an update from the left, um, and now we we uh, we have to update the um, value at position at the last position. Um, let me see. Actually, this is wrong. This one. I think um, this should be the correct way to implement it. Mm. 
let's just see whether it works yes it should uh, st still be working um now let's implement the um, periodic boundary condition because i didn't care about the boundary I, um, actually it was um for the for the choice uh, that, that we had it was not important actually because it was basically zero zero um so let's implement a periodic boundary condition i'm not quite sure whether this works because as, so uh u zero should look at what has happened on the left boundary so uh, this should be updated with sig um, uh, should be updated with the last value. Uh, sorry, uh, u zero squared minus u minus one. You, um, I, I guess the, uh, this was a topic in uh, in the Python class. Uh, minus one is the last entry. Let me see whether this works. Yeah. Yeah, and you see when we uh, uh, boundary conditions are important for cons conservation laws. Yeah. Um, um, and there, but the, con the conservation law can only be uh, um, con realized by the by uh, by our conservative scheme. Yeah. So. Um, so Take, make us a, a smaller time step. Yeah? So what what do we have here? We lose a little bit uh, mass over the right boundary. There's no chance for the for the non-conservative uh, scheme to uh, to fix it to make the the values um, uh, enter here because the the boundary is currently at uh, it's is at zero. You know? so the left boundary con uh, it's uh, the function starts here at zero. So it's multiplied with this uh, zero because zero is uh, the local uh, velocity. So the conservative scheme cannot cannot describe this re-entry over the the right boundary. Yeah? And but you see, there is a re-entry, and and in this in this case, uh, due to the for, um, incoming flow here of the right boundary, we are actually developing um, a shock front here on the left. So, but but uh, what I wanted to say, and we we could also we could also uh, set other boundary conditions. Um, uh, to my, uh, for instance, Dirichlet uh, uh, boundary conditions. Uh, let's say we we say uh, um, u zero is always zero. And on on the right boundary, we, we say it's uh, that doesn't matter because the information is flowing from uh, left to the right. Um, um, we could use anything. Else. So let, let's say u minus one. Uh, that can be, for instance, one. Yeah. If we do this, then we will not have uh, implemented the, the boundary conditions. But then then we keep the uh, value at on the right side at, at one and we keep the value on the left side at zero and th th this means that then we should ma leave, uh, lose mass again yeah so then and then both schedules should lead uh, to the same result again yeah? so, so that would be it let's stick to the DHA boundary because this that's uh, more reasonable uh, for for this case yeah, important that uh, depending on the boundary conditions, you may or may not have a shock formation. And you, if you don't have a shock formation, um, both uh, both schemes that we have derived are actually fine. If you have shocks, you um, you are much better. Um, um, it's much better to use the non -conser the conservative scheme. Move a little. Let's. Let's move to twenty, just to show you that uh, everything's fine. Yeah. 
looks nice, everything's fine. Maybe we, we can also think about what, what um, let, let's take a, a much larger work, um, yeah, 50. By 50, it moves with uh, velocity one. Everything should have left the, uh, uh, the system here. What do you think? Um, what will the solution look like? Okay, maybe I'll come back to this, but uh, first, huh? Let, let's let's uh, try it. Uh, so we, we lose matter here, um, and, th and this will be gone, and it has to be provided by the others. One. So I would expect it's, it's becoming a straight line, but um, um, uh, with a smaller and smaller, smaller slope. Yeah? And this is what it does, yeah? Um, because I set the boundary, uh, the left boundary here uh, to, to one, we will actually have a discontinuity here. So don't worry about that. Okay, but uh, back to our original thing. And maybe we should just... Uh, Let's get back to the uh, boundary conditions because I, I wanted to emphasize con the conservation of mass um, and go back to a pulse. T equals 30, 100. Yeah, you see, the, it's, it's, uh, it's getting slower and slower. Here we have this non-physical um, solution where we have um, a stagnation, basically. The shock front no longer moves, moves but uh, here this moves. Um, I want to slowly reach the boundary. Yeah, and here we are reaching the boundary. And now um, I have implemented, uh, um, and, you, and you see, uh, we still have pretty good conservation of mass. Yeah? Mass. Both schemes are uh, giving the same results there. And now let's cross the boundary. Uh, and. Um, Crossing the boundary means that the shock front should now show up. Uh, um, we come get over here, and uh, the shock front should now show up on the left side. Yeah, so uh, let's do two hundred and fifty. And you see that this is what what what's happening. But but now it. Inter um, that's also a nice thing of, of nonlinearity. It interacts with itself. Yeah? So um, here we we uh, now we uh, uh, the shock front sees the the remain remaining part of the of the previous solution. Yeah? So um, now now it's getting more and more linear and nonlinear. But in principle, the, the uh, solution behaves nicely. And as we, um, or at least as I have ex expected. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, so this is what I um, wanted to show you. We have discussed um, some of the phen phenomena, phenomena that uh, show up with uh, uh, analytical and, um, or that can be derived using analytical and numerical methods to solve differential equations. 
I have restricted myself in order to make it not too chaotic. I hope I have succeeded there. Um, I have restricted myself to first order linear differ differential equations. There, um, there are, of course, many, many important um, differential equations that are second order, in particular, what, what I have shown you, um, the diffusion equation, that's a famous um, yeah, yeah, diffusion equation that, that is uh, non, um, sorry, second order in the spatial components, in the spatial der derivatives, an important equation, um, but, but the same problems show up with, um, uh, with higher order differential equations. So quite a lot of, of uh, things, stability and um, uh, numerical diffusion, quite a, quite a um, and same problems with nonlinearity. Uh, uh, these occur already in um, in first order differential equations. Yeah, so uh, that's about it. That's what I wanted to show you. Um, but I'm happy to, to answer questions if there are still questions remaining. And uh, maybe uh, I don't understand quite the question by Mnugizi. Seems to be a correlation between the two schemes. So currently, I uh, I don't understand what this remark means or what, what this alludes to. So if you can uh, clarify that, I'd be happy to try to answer. Otherwise, are there further questions? Okay. Okay, so um, that was all the material I have prepared. I've uh, done some uh, some changes and also answered some of the things um, uh, in the exercises. So I, I will um, in in a few minutes after I've ended um, my my presentation, I will upload you uh, upload the um, updated file for you. Yes. So there were some some differences I have. Found some typos over my uh, during the talk. Sorry about that, um, but you you uh, can download the updated slides this evening latest. Huh? Okay, um, since I don't see uh, further questions, I um, yeah I would like to thank you for your attention and that you. Uh, yeah, that you s s s are, were still with me in this afternoon session, um, and I wish you a successful uh, last day tomorrow. So thank you very much and goodbye.